Today, we will cover takeoffs. In this tape section, you'll be instructed in the correct procedures for getting your plane safely airborne under various conditions. And you'll be shown how to apply this information to make appropriate decisions on which type of takeoff to use given existing flight conditions. Generally, unless there is a special reason, you will take off into the wind. Taking off into the wind makes sense for several reasons. First, it allows you to use the least amount of runway and the lowest ground speed. Second, it eliminates drift, which means no additional strain on the landing gear. Third, taking off into the wind gives you better directional control. This takeoff allows you to use a steeper climb angle, which gives you better obstacle clearance. And taking off into the wind establishes the circuit pattern at uncontrolled airports. We'll go into the circuit in more detail later in the tape. Now, we'll show you a normal takeoff under ideal conditions. A straight, well-controlled start is essential. Try not to use the brakes, as this slows you down and increases the length of runway you will need. As you progress down the runway, the engine and propeller thrust line should be parallel to the ground. This will give you the maximum thrust and least aerodynamic drag up to the point of rotation. You must rotate the aircraft about the lateral axis in order to increase the angle of attack and fly off the runway. With a nose wheel aircraft, as you travel down the runway, pull back on the control column to lighten the weight on the nose wheel. When the elevators become effective, raise the nose for takeoff attitude. Do not raise the nose too soon or you will delay takeoff due to increased drag. Keep the wing level with the aileron control. With a tailwheel aircraft, lower the nose to takeoff attitude as the elevators become effective. Do not force the aircraft into the air prematurely or the tailwheel will drop back to the ground. Use the rudder to maintain directional control and keep the aircraft level by using the ailerons. As you reach rotation speed, slowly pull back on the control column to get airborne. When you leave the ground, the aircraft should be about the attitude of its best rate of climb airspeed. You will generally find it necessary to put some pressure on the elevator control to hold this attitude until the proper climb speed has been attained. Note that if you relax the back pressure on the control column before establishing the climb, the aircraft could lose height or drop onto the runway again. Maintain the best rate of climb, attitude and speed until you reach a safe height, unless of course there are obstacles in the flight path. In that case, use the best angle of climb speed. Unless stated otherwise, continue climbing with full power until reaching a height of at least 500 feet. You might notice a tendency for the aircraft to yaw to the left during takeoff. This is mainly due to the effective forces produced by the propeller. Tailwheel aircraft are more prone to yaw from the propeller. Since you seldom fly in the conditions we just outlined, it is important to know what to do in less than ideal conditions. These would include crosswinds, the need for short run takeoffs, tailwind after takeoff, hydroplaning, the ground effect, wheel burrowing, and wake turbulence. To take off into a crosswind, hold the control column fully to the wind. As the ailerons take effect, use only enough deflection to counteract the effect of the crosswind. When you reach takeoff speed, leave the ground cleanly and control the bank. It is essential that you do not drop back to the ground as this puts an excessive strain on the landing gear. Once you reach an appropriate height, Make a coordinated turn into the wind to compensate for drift, then retract the flaps if you use them. Climb as you would for a normal takeoff, tracking along the runway centerline. The effect of the crosswind on takeoff depends upon its speed and the angle it approaches the runway. It is a certification requirement that aircraft be capable of operating safely in a 90 degree crosswind which does not exceed 20% of the plane's stalling speed. Using a crosswind component graph, you will be able to calculate the effect of the crosswind on takeoff and whether it is safe to attempt to do so.
You will sometimes find occasion when it is necessary to take off in the shortest distance possible. This may be due to a short runway or snowdrifts, water puddles, or other hazards on the runway. Obstacles at the windward end of the runway or soft or rough surface fields may also necessitate a shortened takeoff run. Before attempting this procedure, consult the takeoff distance tables in the flight manual. Also take into account the effect of wind conditions. On a hard surface runway, keep the aircraft at an angle which will give you a minimum of aerodynamic drag during the takeoff run. Be careful you don't try to lift the aircraft off the ground too soon or you might stall at a critical point in takeoff. Allow the aircraft to reach the minimum takeoff speed before lifting off the ground and then accelerate to the best angle of climb speed. If you are taking off from a soft or rough field, it is important that the weight of the aircraft be transferred to the wings from the wheels as quickly as possible. You do this by maintaining a nose-up attitude during the takeoff run. This maneuver reduces rolling drag from the wheels. Once off the ground, lower the nose to stay in the ground effect and gain proper flying speed. As well, you will have to take into account the ground effect, which will be discussed separately in this section. It is possible to have a situation where there is no measurable wind on the ground, but enough wind above ground to affect your climb. Whenever you have a no wind condition on the ground, use a takeoff procedure that makes allowance for a tailwind shortly after takeoff. If you are taking off on a wet runway, beware of the danger of hydroplaning. This occurs when the tires of the landing gear float on a thin film of water on the runway. In this condition, the aircraft may slip sideways and the brakes will be virtually useless. If you see raindrops appearing to bounce on the runway, it is a good indication that hydroplaning will be a problem. Hydroplaning may also be caused by ponding due to heavy rain or spring thaws. Should you have to take off under these conditions, be prepared to control the aircraft without brakes when the ground speed is above 30 miles per hour. Ground effect refers to an interference of the airflow patterns around the wing by the runway surface. Ground effect increases lift. When a wing is flown very near the ground, there is a substantial reduction in the induced drag. Downwash is significantly reduced. The air flowing from the trailing edge of the wing is forced parallel to the ground. The wingtip vortices that also contribute to induced drag are substantially reduced. The ground interferes with the formation of a large vortex. Ground effect can be detected at a height equal to one wingspan of an aircraft above the surface. Ground effect is not a factor to be ignored. You may find yourself in a situation where your aircraft lifts off the ground but has too great a load or not enough power to climb out of ground effect. Accelerate to the desired climb speed before attempting to climb out of it. Wheel barreling occurs in a nose wheel aircraft. This condition occurs when the main wheels of the landing gear are lightly loaded or clear of the runway and the nose wheel bears a greater than normal weight during takeoff or landing. During takeoff, wheelbarrowing occurs at low speeds when the slipstream increases the lift of the horizontal stabilizer. It may also be caused if you use excessive forward elevator pressure during takeoff while trying to hold the aircraft on the ground at speeds above normal takeoff speeds. If this condition is not controlled, you may end up in a maneuver similar to a ground loop in a tailwheel aircraft. To overcome wheel burrowing, use one of the two following procedures. If the plane has not started to pivot, ease back on the control column, which will take weight off the nose wheel. Then continue on with the takeoff and climb procedures. If pivoting has begun, relax the forward elevator control and return steering to normal. If the pivoting stops, you may continue on with the takeoff. If it doesn't, abort the takeoff. Another hazard to watch for is wake turbulence. This is caused by wingtip vortices of departing and arriving aircraft, especially large ones. It is important you avoid flying into the core of a wingtip vortex. It is possible the vortex will cause a roll greater than you can recover from. 
Wake turbulence is greatest just before the point of touchdown for a landing aircraft and just after the point of takeoff for a departing plane. If you take off behind a large aircraft, plan your takeoff so you leave the ground before the point of takeoff of the preceding aircraft. In other words, use the near end of the runway. If a large aircraft has landed, make sure your takeoff is beyond the point of touchdown of the preceding aircraft. That is, use the far end of the runway. Now, take time for this review of the material you have just covered. Describe the steps to be followed on a crosswind takeoff. Describe the steps to be followed on a crosswind takeoff. To take off into a crosswind, hold the control column fully into the wind. As the aircraft speed increases, use only enough aileron deflection to counteract the effect of the crosswind. When you reach takeoff speed, leave the ground cleanly and control the bank. When you are well clear of the runway, make a coordinated turn into the wind to compensate for drift and retract the flaps if you've used them. Do not allow the aircraft to drop back to the ground because this will put excessive strain on the landing gear. Describe the steps to be followed on a short field takeoff. Describe the steps to be followed on a short field takeoff. First, consult the takeoff distance tables in the flight manual and factor in the effect of wind conditions. On a hard surface runway, keep the aircraft at an angle which will minimize aerodynamic drag during the takeoff run. Do not lift off the ground until the aircraft reaches its minimum takeoff speed. Then use the best angle of climb speed. In the case of a soft field or rough field, it is important that the weight of the aircraft be transferred from the wheels to the wings as quickly as possible. This is done by maintaining a nose-up attitude during the takeoff run. Reach an airspeed that will be high enough to allow safe flight and acceleration to the desired climb. In a soft field takeoff, why must the aircraft be leveled off as soon as possible at a safe altitude? In a soft field takeoff, why must the aircraft be leveled off as soon as possible at a safe altitude? The angle of attack should be reduced gradually to allow the aircraft to accelerate in the ground effect. In a crosswind takeoff, why must the aircraft be turned slightly into the wind? In a crosswind takeoff, why must the aircraft be turned slightly into the wind? The turn into the wind allows you to maintain a track along the runway center line. Should you have any concern, no matter how slight, about wake turbulence, delay takeoff for up to two minutes for a landing aircraft, up to four minutes in the case of a preceding takeoff. This will allow the vortices to dissipate. There is one other set of conditions related to takeoff that pilots must become familiar with. These factors affect the density of the air. Remember back to the principles of flight tape where you were taught that the denser the air, the better the takeoff performance of an aircraft? Air density varies according to elevation, temperature, and relative humidity. These three factors combined have a cumulative effect. The higher the elevation, the lower the density, resulting in reduced performance. Likewise, warmer temperatures mean less dense air. A higher relative humidity also reduces the density of the air, again reducing performance. And as the barometric pressure drops, so does air density. From this you can deduce that the worst possible conditions for takeoff would be a high temperature, above 15 degrees Celsius, with a high relative humidity, a barometric pressure below 29.92, at an airport with a high elevation. To help you compensate for these conditions, refer to the density altitude. This is the altitude corresponding to a given density in the standard atmosphere. Density altitude can be calculated on your circular slide rule. The aircraft flight manual will also give you valuable information showing the changes in performance at various elevations and air temperatures.
You may also use the cost chart to determine takeoff. Some other factors to consider with takeoffs include whether to apply takeoff power before releasing the brakes, the use of flaps, whether to extend the flaps before the takeoff roll begins or after it starts. You'll also want to consider whether to build up speed for takeoff while moving from the run-up position on a short field or obstacle takeoff. The amount of fuel in the tanks may also affect how you handle the takeoff. The answer to many of these questions can be found in the flight manual of your aircraft. Also consult with your flight instructor on these matters. As you gain more experience, you'll handle different takeoffs with more confidence. The last topic in this section deals with the airmanship and common courtesy associated with takeoffs. As mentioned before, if you've been cleared for takeoff and you need a delay, request it. The air traffic controller is concerned with safety, but may not be aware of all the circumstances, especially a pilot's level of competence when unusual conditions prevail. At uncontrolled airports, a landing aircraft has priority on the runway, and under no circumstances should a departing aircraft usurp this priority. Use good judgment and courtesy when deciding to take off behind a landing plane. And never think that the landing aircraft can abort its landing in your favor because you misjudged timing your takeoff. Before taking off in an uncontrolled field, search the sky for other planes that may conflict with your plans. And even though another aircraft may be landing downwind, it still has priority over a departing plane. Remember that aircraft downwind may have had compelling reasons for landing. Finally, don't create traffic jams. The runway is not the place to finish off pre-flight check. Do not delay taxiing aircraft behind you because you haven't finished procedures that should have been done on the apron or ramp. If you have to delay your takeoff, get out of the way so others may pass. And before doing an engine run-up, check around in all directions to make sure that other aircraft won't be affected by your slipstream. Now take time for a final review of the material you've just seen. During a takeoff following the landing of a large plane, why should the liftoff of a light aircraft be delayed until after passing the point where the large aircraft touched down? During a takeoff following the landing of a large plane, why should the liftoff of a light aircraft be delayed until after passing the point where the large aircraft touched down? This allows you to avoid the wake turbulence created by the larger aircraft. Describe why care must be exercised when taking off following the takeoff of a larger craft. Describe why care must be exercised when taking off following the takeoff of a large aircraft. Vortices from the larger plane create wake turbulence. This turbulence begins at the point the larger aircraft leaves the ground. If possible, you should plan your takeoff so that you are airborne prior to the takeoff point of the preceding aircraft. If this is not possible, wait for up to four minutes to allow the turbulence to dissipate. What effect does high ambient temperature have on takeoff distance of an aircraft? What effect does a high ambient temperature have on the takeoff distance of an aircraft? A high ambient temperature will increase the takeoff distance required for an aircraft. This is because the air is less dense and provides less lift. You need the extra runway to build up more speed, creating the lift to get the plane off the ground. 